Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we have got for you a Game Week 7 team selection video where I'm going to show you my Game Week 6 scores, my new rank, my transfer plans for this game week and my captain plans as well. Just pretty much everything, how I'm going to set up my team for Game Week 7. Now I'm sorry I'm leaving this video a little bit late, but basically last week it kind of was a situation where I was waiting for some last minute injury news um, and that news was going to define what transfer moves I was going to make and I ended up not making the transfer move that I said I would make in last video because I got some new transfer news, new information. So this week it's kind of been exactly the same. I've been waiting for some last minute injury news and updates and stuff like that before I committed to any decisions. Now we basically want these videos to be as accurate as possible and that often means leaving them fairly late in the week, particularly if there's injury news to uh, worry about. The last thing I want you guys to think is I'm being dishonest or trying to trick you into making transfers or anything like that. Um, yeah, so hopefully this can be as real and realistic and as accurate as possible. Obviously I'll, I'll talk you through all my thought processes as well. But uh, yeah, guys, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like. It massively helps the channel. And of course, do subscribe if you are new around here as well as we march on on the road to 100k subscribers. We're on 92 now, so we're really getting there. But before we do anything else, just a quick word from our sponsor today, which is, of course, OneFootball, the regular supporters of the show. Now, OneFootball is a mobile app slash website for all things football. You can check out uh, football scores, news, um, t the, the team selections that, that are being done on there you know who's starting for man city this week always a big question on our mind just pop up the uh the uh, one football app and the information is right there for you so it's a really good tool if you just want to check up on what's going on in the world of football definitely recommend it completely free and you can get the, uh, the link to that in the description and um, yeah just go check it out why not so without further ado, let's have a look at the scores from game week six. And I scored 55 points in game week six, which on the face of it probably seems to you guys like a kind of a, a little bit of a low score. But actually, 55 in game week six was actually a fairly good score. And guys, if you got more than 55 points or more than 50 points, you know, last week, I think you can consider yourself you know, to have had a very good game week. So, you know, be happy about 55 points. Sometimes 55 points is pretty good. Uh, so yes, we did get a nice little rank boost there. We are back into the top 10k. Thank the Lord. Oh my God. I, I'm so pleased I'm back into the top 10k because I, I was worrying for a little bit that maybe I was going to be doing some kind of spiral up until I, I pulled the trigger on the wild card. But no, um, I am trying to set, hold off on the wild card. I know my team is showing a lot of gaps here now. You know, we can see that, you know, f for example, Shaw, he played got a yellow card and almost immediately got you know injured and had to come off the pitch in leaving him with zero points really frustrating uh, my double uh, brighton defense didn't pay off really did it uh, we had ailing injured we had trent alexander arnold um you know well, well i mean conceding a few goals against uh, against a brentford team which we didn't really expect did we but there were some some nice things as well so salah jota both picking up some goals there greenwood shooting a lot Maybe being a little bit too greedy, maybe, um, but didn't get any results there. And Rafinha, who I was, oh, I was going to initially transfer out for Saar until I kind of saw some news that Rafinha was actually going to be fit and available for this game. And I thought, you know what? I actually really want Rafinha in my team. So I'm going to leave him in there. I'm definitely going to keep him. And I did. And he got a nice eight points. So we were happy with that. Ronaldo blanks. But uh, Antonio, who a lot of people was kind of skeptical about going for the Antonio captain. And people were saying, you know, just go for Ronaldo against Aston Villa. Super, super obvious. But kind of everything and I kind of explained this all week that everything was telling me not to go for Ronaldo and to go for Antonio as well Antonio performs like a premium when he's fit um, Antonio has the far superior fixture there against Leeds and you know Emi Martinez is a very difficult goalkeeper the Aston Villa you know, defensive stats actually do, looked okay they actually looked okay so I didn't think it would be an easy game for Manchester United so I thought okay well you know let's go for Antonio that's what everything in my gut is telling me and and making that decision it, it's kind of been the difference maker in many ways on my game week score by uh, you know trusting myself and going for that captain on Antonio so uh, yeah real result there and finally Jimenez legend he's back he's back guys I'm so excited it's really nice to see him scoring goals and performing well at the same time so yeah brilliant let's have a look at what we're going to do for game week seven so game week seven is going to be an interesting one. You guys probably already know that I have a couple of injury problems in my team, particularly in defense. But you guys also know that I do have two banked transfers. And the, the fact that I've got two banked transfers, I've got two free transfers to use because I saved mine last week, is a, you know, a big factor in me basically saying I'm not going to wildcard this week. I'm not going to do it. I, you know, I, I could do it. 
maybe it's a good idea to wildcard now, maybe it's not. I, I'm kind of undecided on it. I, I'm not 100% sure, but to waste two free transfers, I think I can fix a lot of the team in two free transfers. And there's some fixture swings next week um, that, that I quite like to take advantage of rather than do it now. You know, we've got the international break uh, between game week seven and game week eight as well. So there's going to be other injuries and stuff like that and unexpected things happening over the international break. There always is. So that's going to give me a real advantage if I save my wildcard from for then as well. We can hop, stop hopping on some Man City players then. We can start hopping on some uh, more Chelsea players there as well. So that's all going to be, um, you know, really quite nice. And I do think I could fix my team in, in two transfers. So, um, yeah, that's what, that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're, we're going to try and fix fix the team we're using two transfers. So let's go. Uh, start off and go with Sanchez. This week, uh, he's got a nice game against Arsenal. Is that a nice game? I don't know. Uh, Arsenal have had a couple of easier fixtures in a row. I don't know whether you want to call... Spurs an easy fixture or not, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't know what the result here is going to be. If I'm completely honest, I, maybe I say this as an Arsenal fan, but I do think Arsenal are going to beat uh, beat Brighton. But as always, it won't be a very big score. So let's hope that uh, that Sanchez can, can keep a clean sheet for the sake of my fantasy team. But uh, who knows what's going to happen there. It's all kind of a win-win scenario for me, really, as an, an Arsenal fan, I suppose. So we won't dwell on that one too much. Uh, we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, who I'm not going to talk about too much. But what I will say is that he is injured. He's not going to be available for game week seven. But we are expecting him to be available for game week eight. So, guys, if you are if you are not wild carding next week, and I am wild carding next week, you know, you might want to consider leaving Trent in your team because if you take him out now and you want him back, it's going to be kind of difficult, uh, you know, in many respects because because of the value he is as a player. He's by far the most expensive defender. So it's kind of difficult to get him back into your team uh, if, you, if you do sell him. So, yeah, do consider just leaving him on the bench for one week only if you can cover it. If you can't cover it, fair enough, completely understood. Um, but try and cover it first if you can. That's kind of what I would do anyway. But, you know, I do because I am wildcarding next week, I do have that option of keeping Trent Alexander-Arnold in my team but just leaving him on the bench or something like that. But I do need to find some defensive cover. Uh, moving on to Luke Shaw, I actually, do believe Luke Shaw will be playing this week against Everton. I, I do think he will. And the reason for that was because I know he thought he was initially injured and Oli Gunnar Solskjaer said there was a chance of him making that uh, that uh, Champions League fixture, but then uh, at the end it was too, came too soon for Shaw. But then Gareth Southgate uh, came out and said how oh, he selected Luke Shaw for the England squad because Luke Shaw, you know, he's fit. He was just, uh, you know, feeling a little bit under the weather, feeling a little bit ill. So he he's it was just an illness that was the problem. So a um, little bit of a strange one. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is famously unreliable when it comes to press conferences. You never really quite know um, where, how much truth there is to anything that he says, to be honest. But what I am going to say is the fact that, that, that Oli did say that there was a chance he'd be ready for midweek added to the fact that Southgate is selected Shaw for the England squad kind of makes me think actually there's a very good chance of Shaw playing so I think I am actually going to gamble on the fact that Shaw is going to play I think I think that's what I'm going to do. I mean, the alternative is to go for, you know, a, a Man City defender or something like that. And Man City are playing Liverpool anyway. And I'm not particularly convinced that Man City will keep a clean sheet in that game, if I'm completely honest. So, yeah, from from that kind of perspective, um, yeah, I may as well keep Luke Shaw and then just gamble on him playing, to be honest. And we're going to finish off the defence with Duffy because I don't really have many options for now anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Duffy's going to complete their defence. It's not looking amazing at the back right now, guys. I'm sure you'll agree to that. And maybe you're shouting, just do a wild card, Dan. Just do a wild card. Oh, no, I think, I think, I'm not 100% sure on this. I think I can get away with not doing a wild card. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna bet on myself here, but we'll move on into midfield. We've got Salah against Man City. Honestly, like I said, although Man City are, have been the the best defense in the league so far this season, the Salah's form, Liverpool's form, the fact that it's a home game for Liverpool, is still making me think that Liverpool can get something out of this game. I really do think that. Um, you know, whether it's a draw, whether it's a you know a Liverpool win. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I'm just. I, if I had to get I, like take a gamble, I don't think the Man City are going to keep a clean sheet this week at all. I, I really am not convinced by that. And if someone's going to get a goal, you have a, you have a good feeling that Salah's going to be a part of that. Now my next player is Jota, which is a worry, like a genuine worry, because I am sort of 90% sure, and I, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but I really don't think that Jota is going to start this game. And I said about Man City being the best defence in the league, if Jota's not starting and he's coming in for 20 minutes at the end, do I really trust that Jota is going to be able to get anything out of, out of just 20 minutes against the toughest uh, you know, team that he could possibly play all season? Mm, not really. That seems like a one-pointer written all over it, which is not something I really want in my team. And I know maybe, guys, you're still shouting at me to play the wild card. Uh, but we'll move on to Greenwood. And 
With Greenwood, he is playing against Everton. Like I said last week, he took a lot of shots. He clearly wants to get back on the score sheets. He doesn't want to be in the shadow of Ronaldo. He wants to do the business. And um, yeah, I, I think there's a good chance of him uh, you know, coming coming into this team once again. I do think he's still he is he's, he's very close to being dropped. I think Greenwood, but I still think he is going to remain in the team just for one or two more game weeks. I would suspect. So yeah, he should be on your radar to remove. But I do think this game against Everton, which a lot of people are kind of considering Everton as a really really tough fixture. I don't really think it is. I really don't think it is. I kind of seen Everton this season. They have been they have been conceding a lot of chances. You know, we, we saw a couple of weeks ago Aston Villa beat them three 0 I don't think Everton are quite as rigid, quite as solid as perhaps some people are making them out to be. And this is a Manchester United game at home. We are seeing this season the home and away factor playing in a lot more. So a home game for Greenwood, same as a home game for sure. I actually think, particularly if Dominic Cavalier is not available, um, you know, potential clean sheets here. I do think that this is going to be actually uh, an OK game for Manchester United. I really do. I, I don't think this is going to be quite as tough as a lot of people are making it out to be. If I'm honest. And then we're going to finish off with the legend Rafinha, who I'm so glad who stayed in my team. He has been declared fit, which is fantastic news, really, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, he's got Watford. Watford have been one of the worst defences in the league this season. And we do expect that the Leeds, with their attacking tenacity, even with the absence of Bamford there, Bamford's not going to be available. Um, Rafinha can still thrive. And he kind of proved that last game week, didn't he? And even the game week before, played really well again. So he's playing so well. Rafinha is, like, I still, I, I say this over and over and over again, but if you're going to have one Leeds player, and I think you should have one Leeds player throughout this really marvellous, run of fixtures for Leeds it should be Rafinha really so uh, yeah that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to leave in Rafinha and then we'll move up to the forwards we've got Ronaldo against Everton like I say I do think this is a good fixture and ignoring the game against Aston Villa where we yes fair enough Ronaldo didn't quite get as many as many sniffs as we perhaps uh, expected you know in the Champions League Ronaldo you didn't really play amazingly well I, I don't think but then he managed to pop up and, and score a goal you know at the end so you know, these things happen in football. Uh, when you're a player like Ronaldo, you will get those goals. And we saw over the first two game weeks that Ronaldo came into the Premier League, game week four and game week five, that Ronaldo was outperforming every single other player in the entire Premier League in terms of those attacking numbers. You know, he was doing really well. He's taking more shots than anyone else. He's, uh, you know, even now, even now, you know, you count the last three game weeks, who has been the top attacking performer over the last three game weeks in terms of underlying stats? It's been Ronaldo. Most shots, most shots in the box things like that, um, expected goals. He's topping the charts in kind of like loads and loads of different really important statistical metrics. And for that reason, he is still a fantastic choice. And alone, I know a lot of people will be saying, I actually prefer Lukaku for this game week because Lukaku is playing against Southampton. Like I say, I don't think Southampton are any easier of a fixture than Everton are. And with Manchester United being a naturally more attacking side who do score a few more goals when they do score goals, you know, we're talking about Ronaldo potential hauls here. You know, you can put, see Ronaldo getting a couple of goals, whereas against Southampton, a couple of goals for someone like Lukaku is, you know, slightly, um, I don't know, slightly less likely. Don't get me wrong, I love the move to Lukaku, I really do. I think it's a very solid move, and if you had unlimited transfers, you know, on a wild card, for example, and you were planning a longer term, you would go for Lukaku, absolutely, but but for this game week only, I feel that this is the last the last roll of the dice for Ronaldo for, for, for a little while, and then we'll probably hop back on Ronaldo a little bit later on in the season, when Manchester United's fixtures pick up a little bit, because they aren't great after Everton, if we're completely honest. And then we've got Antonio. And I really like Antonio because... Um like I say, he plays like a premium whenever he's fit. He is fit. He plays Brentford, who a lot of us kind of thought Brentford, mm, yeah, they're actually going to be one of the uh, tougher sides. You know, they weren't conceding many chances. They weren't conceding many shots. They weren't conceding many goals either. Uh, but it did kind of, you know, occur to a lot of us that we kind of thought, well, maybe that's because Brentford haven't had a really tough fixture yet. They had a tough fixture against Liverpool. And in that game, they recorded the highest expected goals conceded out of every team in the Premier League for game week six. So they are capable of opening up, and, uh, you know, conceding a few chances particularly when they're playing their their attacking brand of football um when they want to score a few goals which they very much did want to do against Liverpool so yeah in in many ways I think we maybe um we maybe want to recognize that Brentford aren't quite as rigid as maybe a lot of us initially thought and particularly as a home game for, for West Ham United a player like Antonio in a similar vein to a player like Salah I know it's strange to be comparing the, the two of them but in FPL terms they are they are really genuinely comparable players in terms of their points output and um, yeah Antonio is, is 
genuinely on for a, potentially on for a really good score here against Brentford. Uh, you know, if someone is scoring for West Ham, you do imagine it's going to be Antonio. If West Ham score a couple of goals, you probably imagine it's an Antonio goal, Antonio and an Antonio assist or something like that. And suddenly you've got a hole on your hands, and that's really quite nice. So don't get me wrong, guys, I am tempted to uh, captain Antonio um, this week, but I think pre wild card maybe that's a little bit risky uh, to do and then finally him and it's like i say back back he's got that goal you know he's had those underlying stats for a while but i've really kind of felt that he needed that goal to boost his confidence get him going you know get out of the gates if you will and uh, he got that um and now he's playing against newcastle newcastle you know well recognized as one of the weaker defenses in the league so far this season He's going to have some opportunities to score. And I, again, again, I really wouldn't be surprised if he scored again. So I'm quite excited in, in many ways to see what he can produce. I, I'm really looking forward to that game, really, because, you know, I'm, I'm quite hyped for Jimenez to get back into it. You know, you know, I think we've all been kind of rooting for him um, after his horrific injury to come back and, and be the player that we know that he, he is and that he can be. And for 7.5 million to get a player of that quality... Absolutely fantastic. So, guys, let's get up the bench. Not too much to see here. We've got Steele against Crystal Palace. Not going to be playing anyway. Uh, we've got Brownhill uh, against Norwich. I guess that's a that's a pretty decent fixture, but he's Brownhill. Uh, we've got Omar Bamadeli against Burnley. Ooh, playing against each other. Maybe he can keep a clean sheet there, but you know, in more likeliness, maybe he doesn't even play. But there is a chance he plays and maybe picks up a clean sheet. There's a chance. Maybe I'm wishful thinking. And, of course, we've got Ailing there, who has been ruled out for this game. We can probably for a, a game week or two after that as well. And it's not looking too good for Ailing as he re requires surgery. Um, yeah, it's not ideal. So, guys, let's make some transfers. You guys already probably know that I'm going to be making, you know, bringing in a Chelsea defender. Now, remember, because I'm wildcarding in game week eight, whatever moves I can make today are going to be one-a-week punts. I only have these players for one week and then I can get rid of them immediately. So I can basically pick any player I want, no risk, um, no risk of having to keep them long term or anything like that. And it's a pretty ideal situation, really, which is another reason why I wanted to save the wild card, because it allows me two transfers to bring in whatever two players I want for just one game week. And who do I like the look of? Well, OK, let me show you guys. Um, we are going to be taking out Ailing and Rafi and uh, Jota, sorry. Hailing and Jota, we're bringing it in Saar, and we're going to be bringing in Alonso. Alonso, because it's okay to take that one risk for one game week only. Um, I am still a little bit worried about having him as a long-term option because, I, you know, you get the idea that Chilwell is going to play some games in, in the upcoming uh, months, right? But... Um, yeah, I, I think that's a good move. Jota, like I said, I don't think he's going to play much games. And I, I really like Saar's one fixture against Leeds. Leeds still struggling uh, with their defenders a little bit with their defensive availability. So, yeah, maybe Saar can get something good here. After that, though, I wouldn't want Saar in the long term. I really wouldn't. I, over the next 10 games, Watford have probably the worst fixtures of any team in the whole Premier League. So, uh, yeah, I, I, Saar is a one-week punt. Absolutely love it. But you guys are probably wondering why I've taken out Ailing rather than Trent Alexander-Arnold. And the reason for that is simply due to potential price drops. Now, if Ailing drops in price, I lose 0.1 team value. If Ailing goes down to 4.4, that's it. I can only sell him for 4.4. Trent Alexander-Arnold, on the other hand, is worth 7.6. Because of the way price drops work and selling prices work, even if Trent drops to 7.5, I can sell him for 7.5. If he's at 7.6, as he is right now, because I bought him for 7.5, I still sell him for 7.5. So I'm, I, won't, I won't lose uh, any money on a 0.1 drop on Trent, but I will lose money on a 0.1 drop on Ailing. So basically, I'm trying to trying to save that 0.1 million I don't need the extra funds anyway because the moves I'm making you know obviously I could I could take out Trent and I could have the pick of any midfielder in the whole Premier League pretty much under like 9.5 million there isn't anyone there isn't anyone I want for the one week punt there, there really isn't um you know the star is the only player I want other than oh, one other player which you guys are probably not gonna like well no okay right there's two other players that I would consider bringing in as well for the one week punt but you guys are probably, well, you'll probably like Ben Rama so Ben Rama is a potential one I could do um I could potentially bring him in and um, that that would actually involve taking out Trent but you know it's not it's no big deal but you know that would be involved taking out Trent so uh, I'm not really that bothered I think I prefer Saar to Ben Rama anyway but the other player is actually Jared Bowen who I actually have very strongly considered doing instead of Saar you know, I spent a lot of time kind of comparing them um, looking at their performances I like that Bowen had a rest midweek compared to Ben Rama when Ben Rama kind of played 90 minutes I like that Bowen actually over the last couple of game weeks has had just as many opportunities kind of goal scoring opportunities and creative opportunities 
used to be fair as Ben Rama, if not slightly more. You know, Bowen getting into slightly nicer positions, I felt, whereas Ben Rama's been kind of dropping a little bit deeper. And like I say, Ben Rama has just played 90 minutes in, in the Europa League. Bowen only kind of played 20 minutes and came on and, and got an assist and did quite well. So, yeah, I, I really do like the look of Bowen, again, as a one-week punt only. You know, it's very circumstantial. Um, but yeah, that's the only other player that I would consider other than Saar. It was between, for me, uh, Saar and Bowen. But Saar just seems like the sensible pick, and I'm sure you guys are going to agree with that one too. Um, but anyway... Um, quickly on captains before we wrap up the video, I am going to be captaining Ronaldo this game week. I do think that's the safe pick. Like I said, I was very tempted by Antonio again this week, but uh, uh, yeah, I just I think I kind of want to go into the international break with a safe pick with a, a solid kind of um, solid move like that because I know a lot of people are either going to be on Ronaldo captain and Lukaku captain. Now last week it was kind of different because I felt very strongly that Antonio is going to outscore Ronaldo. This week I don't feel so strongly, so I am going to go for the slightly safer pick. You guys might think that's slightly boring. Um, fair enough well, you know that's absolutely fine we've got a couple of one week punts in there that's the excitement you know we've got a wild card coming next week that's the excitement so I don't think I don't think you could go you know balls to the wall in every single decision you make if you do that then you are going to take a couple of L's which is not what I want to do um, I kind of want to go into the international break hopefully staying in the top 10k and then we can push on using the wild card and just rise and rise and rise that's that's kind of the plan that's the hope anyway um, so there we go guys uh, the uh, vice captain of course on Antonio and uh, yeah, that's that's the team for game week seven. Hopefully, uh, it goes all right. Um, yeah, hopefully that, that's that's all looking a lot better. It's going to depend on Shaw being fit. You know, potentially Omar Bamadeli being forced to come on from the bench. But aside from that, I actually think this team looks really strong for the game week. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video today, please do leave a like. As I say, massively, it helps the channel out, of course. Do subscribe as well if you haven't done already. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing a deadline stream on Saturday morning, just to warn you guys, because, um, yeah, I've got a, an, an event, a party, and, uh, you know, I don't think I will be in a good state in, on Saturday morning, so I don't know if I'll be available. I mean, I'll keep you guys updated on Twitter, of course. Um, so if you do want to follow me over there for updates on, you know, what I'm kind of up to when I've locked in the transfer, stuff like that. And, yeah, I'm pretty active on Twitter, so at FPL, mate, if you fancy doing that, up to you guys. Um, but aside from that, guys, um, I, I suppose good luck for the game week. I know you guys are all going to smash it. You guys have been doing so well so far this season, and you're, you're, you're doing such a good job, so keep at it. You're doing really well, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, mates. Bye-bye.